thick. This is going to be a rambly one. Have you ever been soldering and just get a huge tower of smoke into your face? Yeah, me too. All the time. It sucks. And I want to fix it. Today, I'm going to be building a soldering fan with a filter to filter out the smoke and hopefully improve the air quality and enjoyability of soldering projects. I have recently started paying more attention to the Air Quality Index, or AQI. The AQI is a measure of pollution in the air, including particle pollutants. While this index is typically used for outdoor air quality, it is reasonable to assume that by reducing the number of pollutants in your house is a good thing too, right? What made me care was a Freakonomics ed episode. This is your brain on pollution, about pollution and the Air Quality Index, and I found that fascinating. I won't spoil the episode, but it boils down to AQI could be one of the largest daily impacts to cognitive function and long-term health. And if my procrastination on this project is good for anything, it's showing how AQI is starting to become a big problem. Thanks, Canadian wildfires. So with this information in hand, I set out to make a filter to help remove smoke and other particles from the air when I solder or work on projects that I don't want to breathe. Disclaimer here, obviously this will not be a replacement for, like, a real air purifier or good ventilation. Design problems and solutions. The heart of this project will be a 120 millimeter diameter knock to a fan, but there's an issue with a knock to a fan, at least this kind. It's driven by pulse width modulation or PWM, pretty much changing what percentage of time is high versus low in a signal from zero to 100%. There's more to it obviously, but I'm not an electrical engineer. If it was a normal DC fan, we could use something like a potentiometer to just limit the power to the fan. But because we need a timed PWM signal from uh, a microcontroller like an Arduino Nano, a microcontroller also adds the options for some other cool stuff. So I decided to add a switch to turn it on and off and an OLED screen because it's cool and why not? Parts. With the goal laid out, let's get looking into the parts list. A 32 by 128 OLED screen, an Arduino Nano, a 10K potentiometer, a barrel jack, a 12 volt power supply, I did end up adding a buck converter, but more on that later, a 3D printed case, there are lots of parts here, but I printed all of them out of Polyterra Paperwhite PLA, and I've uploaded the parts over on printables. a 120 millimeter carbon filter, and a switch. Oh, and a 120 millimeter knock to a fan. Here they are on a breadboard. I wrote some code that will check the value of the potentiometer and the switch, then update the fan PWM signal accordingly. It will also update the screen with the current values. Here's what I built. Take a good look because now we have to assemble it. I'm going to skip over the soldering of the circuit because that's boring as hell to watch. Just use this circuit diagram to wire it all up. You can directly wire almost every component except eventually you'll run out of ground pins. I used a piece of proto board connected to the V in and the ground pin to connect the ground pins to and that worked out just fine. One complication while building this, I ended up burning out one nano. From what I was able to tell, the nano voltage regulators on these clones, while rated up to 12 volts, really don't want to be there. I ended up adding a buck converter to drop the voltage down to around 5 volts for the nano. There's plenty for it to run, and I just added the fan power wires to the 12 volt incoming supply from the barrel jack. Again, check the diagram. To hold the fan onto the base, I'm going to use this T piece, and I'm going to put a snap ring down here at the bottom. This piece just slides into the base, and then you slide the snap ring in around the back. Snap rings are just a ring that goes around a shaft into a groove. Here's a much better example of how snap rings work on a barn door tracker I made a while back. I might make a dedicated video just on snap rings, because in 3D printing, they're so useful. For the filter box, I printed this in two pieces, because you can only make a torture test and try and print it so many times before giving up and taking a new approach. I just used super glue to stick the two pieces together. Make sure to let it sit for like 5 or 10 minutes, just so the super glue 
sets up a little bit more, then use two of the screws that came with the fan to attach the filter box to the back of the fan. Use the other two screws that came with the fan to attach the grate onto the front of the fan. Note that one side of the grate has a small dome in it so that the hub can spin freely. Before we stick the fan onto the base, make sure to install all the electronics in the base. Then slide the bolt through everything and tighten down the other 3D printed nut. Then just use a couple M2 screws to attach the base onto the bottom. I designed it initially using heat set inserts, but I don't really think they're necessary, so I've uploaded a version without them. There we go. It's up and running and sucking smoke out of the air while I solder. Looking back, some things I want to do with my projects are to start looking at them a little bit more critically once I finish. Like in ninth grade's physics class when you finished your lab and you'd have to write, here's what I'd do differently next time. That. The Arduino Nano was definitely overkill, especially once I added the buck converter. I chose it because of the 12 volt regulator, but it ended up not being perfect. Something smaller and cheaper like the Waveshare RP2040 would have worked just fine, and then it's all in Python, so pick your battles I guess. The buck converter was just what I had on hand, and its adjustability is nice, but for something like this where you only need 3.3 or 5 volts, something like one of these regulators would work better, and they're smaller, and cheaper. I think those are the main issues I have, but I don't care enough to do all the work to fix it now because it works and I've been using it since. So far, it works really well. I'll continue to evaluate the stand over time as if there are long-term issues with that, I won't know yet. If there are updates, those will be reflected in the printables files. Thanks for watching. Bye.